In your headlines, Chief Medical Officer breaks down COVID-19 infections. Brand TCI takes home several accolades at the 2021 Travel Awards. And police investigates latest robberies. Hello Turks and Kikas, thank you for joining us for another edition of Newswatch. It's Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. Hello to your walking and Newswatch starts now. Since the month of July, over 400 new cases of COVID-19 was detected in the Turks and Caicos Islands. During the most recent health update, Chief Medical Officer gave a breakdown of the infections. Here's the numbers in Tuesday's leading story. The present surge started at the beginning of July 2021, and since 7th of July 2021, we've detected a total of 485 new cases. 235 of those, or 49%, are male. The age groups are as followed. In the 0 to 9 years age group, there have been 44 cases. In the 10 to 19 years age group, there have been 63 cases. For 20 to 29 years, there's been 83. 30 to 39, 99. 40 to 49 years, 97 cases. 50 to 59 years, 69 cases. 60 to 69 years, 17 cases. 70 to 79, 11 cases. And two cases in those 80 or above. 359 of the cases, or 74%, are residents. Initially, more visitors or tourists were testing positive. However, more recently, most cases have been identified in residents. We can attribute this change to the rollout of the vaccinated only visitors policy, which came into effect on the 1st of September 2021. 303 cases, or 62%, since the 7th of July, have been symptomatic, so this time around, we have noted more symptoms symptomatic individuals. 110 or 23% are listed as contacts of other positive cases and 168 or 35% are linked to international travel and 207 or 40, 43% are unlinked. This number of unlinked cases speaks to ongoing community spread of COVID-19. Dr. Oswood also highlighted that breakthrough cases which were expected increased. However, although hospitalized, no deaths were recorded amongst the fully vaccinated. Breakthrough cases, which are defined as cases occurring in persons who have been fully vaccinated, have been documented in 106 persons since the beginning of the vaccination program. Of note, this number includes data collected on visitors who would have been vaccinated. Breakthrough infections are to be expected, and based on available evidence, vaccination makes the illness less severe for those who have been fully vaccinated, and the risk of infection, hospitalization, and death are all much lower in vaccinated persons compared to the unvaccinated. So the message from the Ministry of Health remains the same. We encourage all eligible persons to become vaccinated. Of the cases described earlier, only two were hospitalized and there were no deaths in vaccinated individuals. The chief medical officer also noted that there has been an increase in cases amongst children, as well as a few workplace clusters. Um, we have continued to see a high proportion of cases among children when compared to the before this surge that started. Since the schools reopened on the 6th of September, we have detected a total of 213 cases altogether of COVID-19 in the TCI. 47 or 22 percent have been among school, nursery or kindergarten age children between the ages of 0 to 17 years. Of the 47 school age children, 40 were documented as attending a local school or nursery. We continue to investigate a few workplace clusters, including one workplace where, which had 42 cases. This week's COVID vaccination report as of 11th of October records that a total of 28,529 persons or 82% of the population have received the first dose of the COVID vaccine, of which 26,233 persons are fully vaccinated, which represents 75.1% of the eligible population. As at 12 a.m. on October 18th, 2021, over the past 24 hours, one new case of COVID-19 have been identified. The number of active confirmed cases in the TCI now stands at 38. 
The World Travel Awards serve to acknowledge, reward, and celebrate excellence across all sectors of the tourism industry. The Turks and Caicos Islands has been named a winner in seven categories at the 28th Annual World Travel Awards. Caribbean's leading beach destination 2021, Turks and Caicos. Caribbean's most romantic destination 2021, Turks and Caicos. Caribbean's leading all suite hotel 2021, The Palms, Turks and Caicos. Caribbean's leading all inclusive family resort 2021, Beaches, Turks and Caicos. Caribbean's leading luxury island resort 2021, Seal Rock Resort, Turks and Caicos. Caribbean's leading new resort 2021, The Ritz Carlton, Turks and Caicos. And Caribbean's leading private island resort 2021, Pine Key, The Meridian Club, Turks and Caicos. These are the seven categories won by Brand TCI at the 28th Annual World Travel Awards. Minister of Tourism Honorable Josephine Connolly commenting on the accolades stated, quote, We are thrilled to have continuously won in these categories of the World Travel Awards, as this is a testament to our continued commitment in ensuring the Turks and Caicos Islands is the leading tourism destination in the region. The Ministry of Tourism's team and industry partners all play an equally important part in promoting the destination and strengthening the brand of the destination. The awards are a cumulative effort of all tourism partners, inclusive of the Ministry of Health, who have guided us throughout this pandemic and implemented protocols that not only keep the local population safe, but have allowed the tourism industry to thrive. We are grateful to our team, partners, and all persons in the industry for the various roles they play in continuing to make our destination a leader in the industry. End quote. Director of Tourism Pamela Ewing stated, quote, My team and I are ecstatic to receive the awards for Caribbean's leading beach destination and Caribbean's most romantic destination. The Turks and Caicos Islands Tourist Board has continued to promote the destination through strategic marketing and promotion plans as both a beautiful by nature destination and as the leading destination for honeymoons and weddings. End quote. The World Travel Awards also recognized and awarded some of the best tourism-related agencies within the Turks and Caicos Islands as follows. Turks and Caicos Leading Boutique Hotel 2021 Winston Resort Turks and Caicos Leading Car Rental Company 2021 Avis Turks and Caicos Leading Destination Management Company 2021 Olympia Destination Management Company Turks and Caicos Leading Hotel 2021 The Palms Turks and Caicos Turks and Caicos Leading Hotel Suite 2021, Four Bedroom Oceanfront Penthouse at Winsong Resort, Turks and Caicos Leading Resort 2021, Amanyara Villas, Turks and Caicos Leading Tour Operator 2021, Caicos Dream Tours, and Turks and Caicos Leading Travel Agency 2021, Turks and Caicos Reservations. It's time for a quick break. More and more news watch when we return. Reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. Police are looking into some reports regarding a banking institution that may have motivated last week's robberies and murder of former long-standing civil servant Alpheus Gardner. Take a look.
The Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force shares that they would have by now met with the Banking Association after receiving tips that the two persons robbed and shot in broad daylight at the Mango Reef and the Royal Jewels parking lots had just visited a banking institution. This follows on the heels of a meeting held with acting Governor Her Excellency Anya Williams, high-ranking law enforcement officials, Acting Commissioner of Police Kendall Grant, Acting Deputy Commissioner Darren Williams, and Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police Willett Harvey. Shortly after the robbery and murder of Alpheus Gardner, reports began to surface that Gardner had just visited one of the banks here on Provo and was said to have withdrew a handsome amount of cash before making his way to the Royal Jewels, where public reports believe he may have been trailed due to the fact that the assailants did not target the Royal Jewels store or anyone else for that matter, going straight for Gardner, shooting him and using his white pickup as their getaway vehicle, an awfully similar account just two days earlier at the Mango Reef restaurant. However, this time, the victim survived. Investigators also visited North Caicos where just a month ago, a Q father was decapitated and found in his home. That family continues their plea for answers. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, your weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providenciales, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Scattered thunderstorms across the Turks and Caicos Islands issued by the forecast for October 20th, 2021. Starting in the nation's capital, Grand Turk, on Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms, high 84, low 80, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. South Caicos on Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms, high 84, low 80, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. North and Middle Caicos on Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms, high 85, low 79, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Parrot and Pine Key on Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms, high 85, low 79, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And finally, on Providenciales on Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms and showers, high 85, low 79, winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Time now via sunrise and sunset. Sunrise at 6.48 a.m., sunset at 6.21 p.m. And for your high tides and low tides, high tides, 8.12 a.m., 8.30 p.m. For your low tides, 1.56 a.m., 2.29 p.m. Time now for your hurricane outlook. For the North Atlantic Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next five days. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. We'll be right back with more News Watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to Newswatch. Two-time sex offender Steve Santana will finally be held accountable for the heinous acts carried out on his innocent victims. A judge handed down Santana's sentence recently and Newswatch has the details. 
Steve Santana has been sentenced to eight years in prison after being on remand since July for yet a second sexual assault incident, which in this turn of events, police were able to make stick. Back in July, Santana stood before a judge in a two-week trial after finding himself the subject of another sexual assault and a bail hearing after attacking and violently raping a female. He pled not guilty to this charge in 2019, but after trial this July 2021, Santana has finally been sentenced. After some say he was lucky to have escaped an initial conviction a few years prior. In that case, Chief Justice Margaret Ramsey Hale granted him an 18-month suspended sentence after admitting to unlawful carnal knowledge of a young teenage girl. The sentence was suspended under the condition that Steve Santana did not commit or found himself convicted of another sentence, which didn't last long. Back in July, this latest victim took the stand over a five-day period, recounting the awful, agonizing torture brought by the hands of Santana, who was said to have unlawfully and brutally sexually assaulted and choked her, leaving her with bruises. Sources say it took the victim a week to close out on the witness stand between her emotional instability and fight to hold back tears as she recounted the unbearable emotional and physical pain of that assault. The rape trial was led by Crown Counsel Glenda Clark and Santana was represented by Lara Maruf Mizik. Sex offender now stains his criminal record. So many interesting stories have emerged this week, but here's another one that made this edition of Newswatch. The Kazuarina tree is known for its delicate needle-like twigs and distinctive cones. Contrary to popular belief, the tree is not native to the TCI, but is in fact originally from India, the Pacific Islands, northeastern Australia, and throughout Southeast Asia. While seemingly harmless, the tree has been affecting TCI's ecosystem. The negative effects that the Casarina tree has on our endemic rock iguanas on Half Moon Bay is that these trees' um, leaves, also called the neel, when they drop them, they cause this thick blanket which prevents our native vegetations from growing, um, which causes our rock iguanas to not have enough vegetations for them to eat, knowing that these species mainly eat berries and leaves on the keys. Aravna Luksama of the TCI National Trust informed us of how residents of the TCI can make a difference. It's important for our residents to get involved because this doesn't only affect our endemic rock iguanas, it also affects um, visitors who are trying to get on the key because this thick blanket would cause them to not be able to access the key. And we know a lot of people love visiting Half Moon Bay and Little Water Key. She further stated that over $2 million has been spent over the course of 10 years by partners of the National Trust to protect our native rock iguanas that play an important part in the TCI's tourism industry. So I think that our residents should get more involved in our ongoing projects um, to protect our endemic rock iguanas, even if it's to take down Casarina trees. Not that all the trees are bad. One or two is okay, but when we have a bunch of them on the key, this causes a problem for our endemic rock iguanas. Aravna told us of other threats to TCI's ecosystem that are an even bigger problem for the rock iguana than the Kazoo Arena. Uh, another major issue that we have that affect our endemic rock iguanas is the green iguanas, which are their cousins. Um, our rock iguanas are the Ciclura carinata, which is the scientific name for them, whereas the green iguanas, um, their scientific name is Iguana Iguana. These green iguanas pose a threat to us as people and our endemic rock iguanas because they lay up to 70 eggs every year, whereas our endemic rock iguanas only lay 2 to 11 every year. Whereas a green iguana can lay up to 70 eggs twice a year. Which means they outcompete our endemic rock iguanas, they can bully them out of their burrows and take over the Turks and Caicos Islands, and we know that our endemic rock iguanas are currently endangered, so we can't have that. And it doesn't stop there. Green iguanas climb power poles and cause power outages and has cost the U.S. government in Florida up to $38,000 in power pole repairs. The underground burrows could be problematic for infrastructure and they are a threat to locally grown vegetation and produce. So we recommend that people call us at 344-8296 
or WhatsApp us, letting us know the location that you see them so that we can be able to capture these species. We also don't recommend that people do this themselves because they're able to bite you and once they see that people are after them, they'll become shy and it causes us um, a bigger problem to catch them. Reporting for PTV News Watch, I'm Ali Carvey. Well, that wraps it up for today's newscast. Mr. Sturry, you can always visit www.ptvatci.com or join us every weekday at 6 30 p.m. for the real news. I'm Latoya Walken signing out until next time.